Okay, so today we start uh, chapter two about uh, Catalan garden. Oh, it's not working. This. Uh. Okay, the Catalan garden. I mean the the main uh, commercial interpretation of Catalan number and uh, the main bijection. So what I mean by main, uh, there is a, a in Stanley book, a series of uh, interpretations, maybe 70, 80 different interpretations, so thousands of bijections. But uh, in all my life, I, some bijections uh, come back uh, very often. They are used in different problems. So I try to select some of the, what I call main bijection. It's a personal uh, point of view, but uh, some bijection because they are used in many different problems and also because uh, sub uh, typically bijection can be, can be defined as a composition of two or three of this basic bijection. And also I have selected some what I call the principal commentary interpretation of Catalan numbers. And there is some other interpretation, but they are very close to this main interpretation. So in this class today, I will give nine main interpretations. There will be three interpretations in terms of trees, binary tree, complete binary tree, and planar trees. And there will be three interpretations in terms of paths, the dick path, the two-color Motskin path, and the Lukasiewicz path. All this is enumerated by Catalan number. Also, historical uh, interpretation, which go back to Euler. The first time the Catalan number appeared, to my knowledge, in the Western uh, literature was by Euler in 1751, in a letter to his friend Goldbach about triangulation of convex polygon. I will use also staircase polygon, or parallelogram polyomino, and also non-crossing partition, which appear in many areas of characteristics, and also it's strongly related to free probability in some other uh, context. <coughs> so first, binary tree and complete binary tree. So we have seen in chapter one, we have defined a binary tree as a triple with internal vertex, external vertices, and in this uh, lecture, in fact, I'm going to change the terminology. What we call before binary tree will be now complete binary tree. And I will define now the general binary tree, which will be called binary tree by himself. So this is a complete binary tree. And this is a binary tree. So binary tree is a triple. Uh, the general bin binary tree, the triple a left subtree, a right subtree, the root, and maybe if it's not empty, it's a triple, and if it's maybe, it's empty. So here in my example, this binary tree, this triple, is the following. So see, this binary tree is defined by this triple with the left subtree and the right subtree. Now this left subtree is again a triple with the root of the left subtree. And now this single node is going to be a triple with empty, empty on the both sides. This right subtree is a tree triple. You see, so recursively, this definition of binary tree by triple, you can uh, then it stop when you arrive at the terminal point or the leaves of the binary tree. So it's any triple um, binary tree with, uh, if else it is empty, or else it's a triple with the point, the root of the binary tree, and left and right subtree, which maybe uh, can be empty, one of them can be empty, or maybe both, or maybe nobody. So some terminology, I have the root, I have the left subtree, the right subtree, L and R, and the subtree of a subtree is a subtree, so recursively you define a subtree uh, for any vertex in the binary tree, it's all the vertices which are below. And uh, the root of the left subtree will be called uh, a left son or a left daughter. The root of the right subtree 
will be called uh, right sum, and this recursively in all the binary tree, each vertex, maybe as a left sum, maybe as a right sum, maybe I don't have any, any sum. So if for each vertex, there is four different uh, cases in the case of general binary tree. Maybe it's a double vertex, there is a left and a right sum. Maybe it's only a simple, simple vertex, there is only one sum on the left, or <laughs> on the left, <laughs> or on the right, <laughs> just reverse. <laughs> or maybe it's a leaf, there is no, no sum at all. So this is a complete binary tree. The binary tree of chapter one, it, this is, uh, there is no simple vertex. For the complete binary tree, there is only this kind of vertex or only this kind of vertex. That was the binary tree of this chapter one. Now I need uh, this more uh, general definition. So if you have a binary tree with the root, you can define a path going from the root to any vertex. It's a unique sequence of vertices where you can join the roots to the vertex by uh, descending in the tree, by following left or right edges. It's a very unique path going to this vertex S, which is the root of a certain subtree. And I can define the height of a vertex. The height of the vertex S is the number of edges you have to follow, starting from the root and going until the vertex x. That's the length of the path in the binary tree. Now this height can be decomposed in a left and right height in two different, such as the height is the total, uh, the sum of the left and right. The left height is just the number of left edges you met when you go down in this path. This path has a certain number of left edges, a certain number of right edges, and this number of left edges, the right edges, will be the left height and the right height of the vertex. And the total height is the total number of, vertices of edges in this path, so it's the sum of the two heights. Now, some other terminology I will use in all the in the following classes. In, uh, if you start from the root and you go always the left, the longest path going left will be called the left principal branch of the tree. And the longest path going to the right edges starting from the root, the longest path going always to the right will be the right principal branch of the binary tree. The length of this branch will be an important parameter on the statistic of binary tree. Now we'll use what is called the traversal of a binary tree. We are going, this is typical in computer science. You are going to read vertices one by one of the binary tree in a certain order. And there is three possible order. The first one is the pre-order. You want to visit once and only once all the vertices of the binary tree. So it's defined recursively in the following way. If uh, you visit a non-empty binary tree, then first you visit the root of the binary tree. Then you visit the left subtree. And when you are finished to do all this, then you visit the right subtree. And visiting the left subtree, again, it's a recursive definition. You first visit the root, then the left of the left subtree, then etc. Pre-order, because you see, you have to visit the root, you have to be visit one of the left subtree, one of the right subtree. You can put the root before, in the middle, or after. Yes, uh, Sunder? When you say then visit the right subtree, do you mean the right subtree of the point? Yes. Mm -hmm. No, no, no of the big one. Of the big one? Yes. So you hop from here to there. Mm -hmm. the First the root of the big tree. And the root, then the tree is defined by a triple so left yeah, root. Then you so then you visit the whole left subtree of the big tree. And when you have finished all this, then you visit the right subtree of the big tree. 
So I give an example. For this tree, it's a triple, this is the left subtree, the root and the right subtree. So first, you visit the root. Then, I'm going to visit this left subtree. So recursively apply the algorithm. First, I visit the root. So this is the second vertex. Then, I visit the left subtree. And then, I visit the right subtree of this left subtree. So first the root, then the left in the body, then the right. So I have finished with the big left subtree of the big tree. I have finished with this, I have finished with all this. So now I go to the, to the right subtree. Now I visit the root, then the left subtree, then the right subtree. I did not write it in a programming language. Maybe we are not familiar <laughs> with it. <the laughs> Maybe it's simpler in programming language. <laughs> so I will correct the slides and put it in a in programming uh, algorithmic procedure. Either. So another way to describe this is to say, say you follow, suppose you are blind and this is the wall and you follow the, you follow the wall by touching with the left hand. You follow, follow the wall like this, you follow. So this is, uh, you walk around this uh, green uh, wall and uh, you see each vertex, you are going to visit each vertex twice. You will meet the vertex two here, then when you go back, you will meet here. So the, you put in order, the pre-order, you put the number one, two, three, four, five, each time you visit a vertex for the first time. This is the first time you visit one, first time you visit this one, first time you visit this one, then I visit it a second time, then a second time, then first one I visit this one, see? First one I visit this, I have already visited, already visited, then first time I visit this, so it's another descriptive way of uh, thinking the pre-order of a binary tree. The pre-order means, you see, you have three choices. You visit the root, you visit the left subtree, and you visit the right subtree. So you can put the root first in the middle or at the end. So you have three possible orders, the in order, symmetric order. You visit the left subtree first, all the vertices of the left subtree, then you visit the root. And then you visit the right subtree. Recursively, you, you do this. So here is a, an example. First, you visit this left subtree. First, you visit the left, so this is the first one. Then you visit the root. Then you visit the right subtree. So first, the, the root, left, and the body. Right? So you are finished with this. Now you visit the root of the big tree, and you continue uh, recursively. And finally, there is a third possibility, is to post-order, you visit first the left subtree, then you visit the right subtree, and at the end you visit the root of the, of the big uh, tree. So this gives you an example like this. See, I have visited first, first the left subtree, then the right subtree, then the root. Once I finish all this, then I am going to visit the right subtree, and at the end, I will uh, visit the root of the big tree. And this can be put also in an analog way to the pre-order. If you follow like a blind man, touching the wall, you follow all this path, you will put some number, one, two, three, four, five, the last time you visit the vertex. So this is the first time, first time, first time. Now the second time I go around the vertex, so I put a one. Uh, it's a, no, this is the last time I visit this one, last time, now the last time I visit four, so you see, you put your number. The last time you visit the vertex, each vertex is visited twice. And uh, there is no way to know <laughs> <laughs> Yes, because you can always put, <laughs> if you are blind, but you can put, uh, you can put a mark on the vertex to know that you are already visited once. No, but uh, see, it's like four. You have to visit it three times, and you have to put it four other times. Well, if you're the only blind man, you have to go around twice. <laughs>
Well, it's a, it depends what you, you will interpret what means the last time or first time. <laughs> so of course there is a very trivial easy bijection. The binary tree with n vertices counted by Catalan number in bijection with complete binary tree with 2n plus 1 vertices. There is n internal vertices and n plus 1 external vertices. So the bijection is trivial. When I have such binary tree, you just uh, add everywhere external edges in red. So if you have a, if the, if the point, if the, it's in double point, you do nothing. But if the vertex is a simple vertex, left or right, you will add one edges. If it's a, a leaf, then you will add two edges. And what you get, you see, it's a complete binary tree. And this explains the terminology that this was external vertices. And this is internal vertices. Internal vertices were well, the vertices of the, of the binary tree, and external vertices are the vertices they have added to the binary tree to get a complete binary tree. So exercise, I already proposed this once, but I repeat it. <laughs> Find a bijective proof. <laughs> you just need to, to handle with binary tree and complete binary tree. Or maybe only complete binary tree. Uh, you need. Uh, I will give the solution next time. It's uh, not too complicated. Uh, it's, uh, this is uh, interpretable. Complete binary tree with two n plus one uh, vertices. This is any choice of the vertices. You do something in two different ways, and you get a bigger tree with uh, n plus one internal vertices and n plus two external vertices. N plus two is precisely the number of external vertices. So if you want to be able to go back, you have to point to one of the external vertices. It's not too difficult. You should, uh, next time, <laughs> I think there is no classes on uh, Republic Day 26, so you have a whole week <laughs> to solve, uh, to get the proof. Now the third kind of trees is planar trees. Or planar tree or order tree because they are embedded, they are written on the, on, on the plane. So this is a kind of a planar tree. A vertex can maybe have very many, many, many descendants, many sons or daughters. So a planar tree is else, it is reduced to a single vertex, the red vertex, the root. Or else, if it's bigger than the root, there is a root and then the non empty sequence of planar tree. Sequence means a totally order list of, uh, of planar tree. Like this one, here there is T1, the first, the first subtree, and T2. So this sequence T1, T2, TK, it's an order sequence. So the name order or planar, because I am writing them in the, in the plane, and I am not allowed to interchange these two uh, or the three. There is, in general, this K, uh, K sequence of k planar tree. And of course, such planar tree are in bijection with forest of planar tree. If you delete the root, a forest of planar tree, it's convenient also to take this. A forest of planar tree, just a sequence of planar tree. So you go from one to another. If you have a sequence of planar tree, you can always add a vertex to get the planar tree. And so the number of planar trees with n plus 1 vertices, or the number of forests of planar trees with n vertices, this number is again the Catalan number. So if you apply the methodology of chapter 1, when you have sequence of object, you know what, uh, how it projects on the level of the rating function. So you have a, a planar tree is else reduced to the root, or else it's the root multiplied by the giving a sequence of planar tree, but non empty sequence of planar tree. Sequence of planar tree is 1 over 1 minus y, but non empty sequence is y divided by 1 minus y. So check that y is going to be the orienting function of Catalan. But maybe there is a shift between n plus n 
n e n plus 1. Check. <laughs> also, there is a pre-order on this kind of tree. First, you visit the root of the planar tree. Then you visit each of the subtree, T1, T2, Tk, in the order of T1, T2, Tk. Sometimes it is called also the depth first search algorithm in the case of a tree, in general in, in the case of a graph. And this was done in France by uh, the engineer Charles-Pierre Tremot. He was to, to get out of a maze, you can apply this algorithm. In the case of trees, you get this uh, or oh, it's very common, very classical, depth first research in tree. So in planar tree, you always go the leftmost possible. When you have finished, you go back and again go the leftmost possible. This is a procedure to go away in a maze, in a graph. Or a so here is the labeling of the tree. So you see, you first this, then visit this, and each time you go the leftmost, first the root, then first the first subtree, then the second, the third. When you have finished all this, then you visit this. So each time you go the leftmost possible, and when you have finished, you go back recursively and you you continue like this. So bijection between tree to tree, from binary tree to forest of planar tree, and thus to planar tree. So take a, take a binary tree. So this is very very classical bijection. You can find it six, 50 years ago in the Donald Knut book. So you, it's, it's better to imagine that you rotate, you rotate the, like a right rotation, the binary tree, and then you add some new edges. So you keep, you keep all the edges going down. It was the left edges before, and then you add some new edges in the following way. You see, when you have this kind of hook, uh, you keep these edges, which were the left edges, now it's going on. This was right, right edges, so when you, you connect by blue all, the, all these vertex, you connect them to this. And what you get, if I just keep the blue edges, I delete the green edges having no blue edges uh, uh, aside, I, I keep this one, all these edges, but I delete these green edges, and what I get is a forest of binary tree. And if you prefer, you can add a root to get really a planar, a forest of planar tree, I mean. Can you say it again? It's convenient to realize like this, you rotate the 45 degrees uh, binary tree to get uh, vertical edges or horizontal edges. Then all the vertical edges, you put them a blue color aside the vertical edges, and you add some new blue edges. In this way, when you have uh, vertical edges and immediately after you have a sequence of horizontal edges, then you, you connect all these uh, vertices to these vertices, to this vertex. So for example here, I have this uh, hook, I connect these three vertex vertices to this one. And then I delete the horizontal green edges, which <coughs> give me this. And this is the bijection. It's what's called in the volume one of Knut in the 60s, the fundamental transform. Then there was the second fundamental transform, the third fundamental transform. And now there is more than 100, <laughs> so we stop calling all this fundamental. <laughs> In permutation also there was fundamental transform by Freta, but uh, that was the first time the bijection was used 50 years ago. Can you show the reverse of that bijection? You can this? The inverse, the inverse bijection. Ah, the inverse? Well, I have no slides to show the inverse. You can <laughs> You can imagine, well, I can do the inverse, <laughs> doing this. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the inverse, you, you have your, in blue, imagine in blue your forest. 
Okay, so yeah, I, am I am going to connect by green edges all the vertex which have the same uh, ancestor. Which are the same height. They are the same height, yes. Uh, and then you delete, uh, you, and then you see when you have this kind of things, a vertex with, uh, with many, many, many sounds, all the roots of a T1, T2, TK, then you, you connect all this, all the brother or sister together, you connect them, and then you delete the blue edges except uh, the first one. Not all the words have the same height, but all the words in this greater height, just one more. But these vertex are all the, these three vertex are the sound of this vertex. The sound is the And then you, and then you get this. <laughs> but now I can do. Uh, there is two rotation. I can rotate to the left and uh, do the analog in the mirror image. So what I have done, you see, it's uh, now I had I had purple edges to this kind of a hook. Uh, here you have a vertical edges horizontal, so uh, so I keep I keep this point I keep I keep uh, this green edges vertical green edges and then I delete horizontal edges and I get this. And I can go back. <laughs> okay, so that's the end of the story about the uh, trees. Three kind of trees and a trivial bijection uh, and another bijection between binary tree and planar tree. So now we next section. There is three kind of paths: the Dick path, the two column Motkin path, and Lukashevitz path. So we have already seen Dick path. We have seen Motkin path related to directed animal. So let's recall all this. So a dig path, uh, recall it's a path on the quarter of the plane, starting at the origin, staying always uh, above the zero level. You go back at the zero level, and the elementary steps are always northeast or southeast. It's called dig path because von Dick related to free group uh, generator and words in a free group. And, uh, Usually it's the same as a, if you rotate 45 degrees, you get the so-called ballot pass. So there is many historical paper by Bertrand, the ballot problem, etc., etc., in the 80, 80, in the, at the end of the 19th century. And, but uh, before it was the ballot pass for the ballot problem, then we need to have pass like this for the orthogonal polynomial theory because we need the height of this point. Then, then this one introduced a terminologic pass, but now in some new uh, commentaries, explain the QT, the QT and all this. Now they, they, people to call this dig pass again, <laughs> the ballot pass. So there is some confusion. In the, uh, it was, there was two different words, uh, and now there is confusion. So the second family of pass is a two-column Motskin pass. So first I define a Motskin pass. Motskin pass is like the dig pass, but you have more, one more possible elementary step, it's the level in the... So Motskin pass, you start at the origin, you are in the quarter of the plane, you are always above the x-axis, and each elementary step is going to the northeast, to the east, or the southeast. So it's just the same thing as dig pass, but you, have put, you can put some level uh, anywhere at any time. And very, very easy exercise, the Motskin pass satisfies the generating function for such parts of length n, satisfies the an algebraic equation. Which is the extension of the... If there was no level, then you, will, you would get the dick, dick pass, but I am counting by the length, not uh, half of the length, so this means there is a T2 here. It's a so it's exactly the same uh, thing. You, you look the first time you touch, you touch the uh, x-axis. 
So maybe at the, maybe at the beginning, uh, the path starts with a level, and then you have this term, the level multiplied by another path, uh, it's uh, written here, or maybe it's like for the dig path, you, you go up, so you are, you are looking, cut the path at the first time you touch the x-axis, and so what remains is two Monskin paths. Here the decomposition should be, you stop here in a, and Moskin pass because of a Theodore Moskin, he has written some uh, paper in analysis where this uh, number appear. So what I need for Catalan, uh, the Catalan garden, is something uh, two color Moskin pass, which are going to be enumerated by the Catalan numbers. So a two color Moskin pass is a Moskin pass and on the level, you put two color, two possible color on the level. Each level, you can put it blue or you can put it red. And then the number of such two color Motkin pass is going to be the Catalan number. Shifted by one, the, the number of two color Motkin pass will be exactly Cn plus one. So they are very useful intermediate uh, quintal objects. In many, many problems, uh, they appear. It's, it's good to introduce them to simplify the Catalan uh, problem related to Catalan. So to show that it's analytically that it's contained by Catalan number. So two color Motkin pass, you have the same, same equation as for Motkin. So else the pass is empty, or else it is starting by a level. But now we have a two. Because the first, the, the first, if it's starting by a level, it can be blue or can be red, and then follow by the same kind of path. Plus, plus, if it's not starting by a level, then it will go up, and then you cut the first time you touch. So you have the, exactly the same equation as for Motkin, but you have a two here. Now if you write y equal one plus t, tz, you get exactly the variating function for Catalan. So this is Catalan. And this change of uh, the rating function y to z is equivalent to shift go from n to n plus 1. So this is the analytic proof that this path are counted by Catalan number. And I'm going to give you a bijection, easy bijection to show that this is uh, So it is the second category of pass. So there was a dig pass, two color Motkin pass. And now the Lukashevitz pass. I will need them to prove the Lagrange inversion formula combinatorially. It's a cyclic lemma on the Lukashevitz pass. So Lukashevitz pass, it's a sequence of vertex in the, on the positive integer. They start at the zero, zero. They finish at the level uh, zero. So it is a Motkin, in blue it's a Motkin pass. Uh, it's like an extra uh, step, but the Motkin pass is in, the Lukasiewicz pass is in blue. And each elementary step is the following. Uh, you, the abscess increase by one, but then the level, you can, you can go down, you can stay at the same level, or you can go up at any, any height you, you like. So the, you see, elementary step, or this kind, you can, like for the dig pass or Motkin, you can go down a level, can go up, but now you can go up as far as you want in a single step. You can jump. Uh, for example, here I have jump two, then I decrease by one, zero, zero, I decrease by one, uh, up, one, one. So it is a Lukashevitz pass, and they are coded by a language, which is called the Lukashevitz language. It's related to logic. Uh, it is a Lukashevitz of a of exp logic expression in a related to Lukashevitz. So the Lukashevitz language, it's, uh, you take the alphabet of letters x index minus one, zero, etc. All the letters which correspond, this correspond to go down, uh, this a level, go up, etc. You take this language and you take a monoid morphism. The m first monoid is a free monoid. Second monoid is integer with a positive, with addition of, uh, and such as that, the, the delta of the letters is i. 
So the delta of a word will be the sum of all the delta as an integer, and, uh, and this is the definition of the Lukashevich language. So the delta of a word is minus one. Why do you need that minus one? I mean, you could have stopped before when you reach the expression. Why did you need the next one? Ah, because usually the Lukashevich expression, they need uh, in Lagrange inversion, I will. Uh, If you refer to Lukashevich's uh, expression in logic, it's uh, no. I refer. Well, it's you can uh, you can avoid you can stop at zero level, but it's uh, I, I put as these extra letters. It will be convenient in the Lagrange inversion, or sometimes uh, you don't but need to put it. Same, so. uh, yeah, so of course it's just an extra. It's an extra edges I've added at the end. You don't need uh, really. Uh, what is important is that the delta. For any left factor of the Lukashevich word, then the delta is always strictly or weakly or zero or it's positive, non-negative. The delta is non-negative, and at the end, I go to minus one. So this is the definition of Lukashevich uh, language. And you see, this is, uh, this is the example. I have this Lukashevich pass, and. Uh, so I put a jump by two, minus one, zero, zero. So it's just a coding of the, of the elementary step uh, from minus one, zero, one, two, et cetera, with an extra, adding an extra step here, which sometimes may be convenient, maybe not convenient. Uh, if you don't like it, uh, cancel it. If, uh. So the size proves that the number of such Lukashevich paths of length n. No, the length is the length of the blue path. Eh? <coughs> the length of the path, eh? the blue uh, edges, is exactly the Catalan number. Lukashevich <coughs> path in blue. And uh, Lukashevich's language, just a coding. <coughs> okay, you have, so you have three kinds of paths. The dick, the two-color Motkin, and the Lukashevich. And I'm going to give bijection from path to path. The next section will be bijection between trees and between paths. So bijection between two column Hodgkin paths and dick paths. So here is a dick path. And you do something which reminds the flavor of renormalization in physics. Uh, I am going to follow the dick path and jumping the step two by two. So I, I don't start from the origin, I start from the second vertex. I start from this vertex and I, I jump two by two. So which means between two yellow vertex, I have four possible cases. What happens if the horizontal thing is on the ground floor? How, how do you go back? Wait. Eh? Wait. No, the dick pass. I start from a dick pass. I start from a dick pass. So let me finish uh, the definition of the bijection. I start from a dick pass. No, this is a bijection, right? It's a bijection between dick pass of length 2n and 2 color Moskin pass of length n minus 1. Yes, yes. Wait, I am, no, I am, wait, I am explaining the bijection between dick pass to a two column Hodgkin pass. Then when we have a two column Hodgkin pass, we'll see what happens if, if it's at the ground floor. But the rule is that you, you start from the, not from the first point, but the second point. Uh, I start from this. If I was starting from this, then there would be the constraint on the level at the ground floor. 
because I am shifting, I am starting here, I can have any, you see, I can have this uh, between two consecutive vertex, I can have this, and this will be a level at the ground floor if I have started from this point. So between two consecutive yellow points, there is four possible cases, up, up, down, down, and this down, up, or up, down, which correspond to the four the four possible, uh, the four possible uh, step of a uh, two-chromatic pass. You replace this by a north east step. You replace this by a down step, and you replace each of this uh, pair of uh, seconds by a blue or a red. Uh, so this this will be a blue, and this will be a red step. Uh, here it's red, blue. Blue, red, blue, red. So there is four possible uh, pair of uh, elementary stem you dig pass, which gives four possible step in uh, blue level, red level up or down. And because I have started here, I may have some. Uh, if 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 I are going this, if I have a, a red, uh, if the dig pass was doing this, then I, it's possible to have a red step at the floor at the zero level. But if I was starting from this, then I, I would get two Kolomotkin paths of length n, and not of length n minus one, with a constraint on the level on the, on the level at the zero level. The constraint should be that I don't have any red step at the zero level. But now I have shifted this by one, and then I have any, what I get is any two Kolomotkin paths. Uh, the reverse bijection, for example, it's uh, if you have uh, this, then you replace, start with the two column Motkin pass, and you make the substitution by replacing this northeast by twice northeast, this blue and red by this uh, kind of thing, and uh, down and down by this. So for many two column Motkin pass, you do the substitution of each elementary step by a pair of elementary step, and what you get you do this substitution, and then you have to add an extra edges at the beginning, extra northeast at the beginning, extra southeast at the end to get a dig pass. You do this, and uh, you, re you get this, and then you, you, add to, you have to uh, add these extra edges to get back uh, to the dig pass. So this, this bijection, I have met, him, met it many times in Cometrix. It's very useful to prove some uh, theorem. And, uh, for example, you, we will, maybe I, if I have time this year, I will do it. But next year or another year, you will see that the, if you wait, the weighted dig pass, weighted Motkin pass, give you the whole theory of orthogonal polynomial of continued fraction, moment of orthogonal. And what I have done is kind of contraction. Start from a dig pass, you see, and then you contract the, the height of the Motkin pass is going to be about half of the height of the dig pass. And if you weigh the path, then this is exactly the explanation of contraction in continued fraction to go what is called a steel jet contrafraction, to go to a Jacobi contrafraction. So this is explanation very simple uh, in terms of weighted path. So all this is fundamental bijection to go further in the in beautiful theory. Uh, any exercise, proof to share identity. <laughs> Uh, you need the. Uh, you have to start from a. Uh, well, you have to use dig pass, uh, two Kolomotkin pass, and the bijection between two Kolomotkin pass and dig pass, and you should be able to prove this identity. It's a beautiful identity which relates a Catalan number, is a sum. Uh, you have to choose, say, you choose something of even size. Two i. So on this thing that you put a Catalan, you put a dig pass of length uh, two i. Among n elements, you choose two i elements, and on these two i elements, we'll put the element of a dig pass. On the remaining elements, bah, you, you will put two colors. You fill the two colors are the level of a two color Motkin pass, and then apply the transformation, and you you will get again. Uh, I have solved half of the. 
try to do it. You have one week <laughs> to prove this beautiful identity. Very easily, with, once you know this bijection, two Kolomotkin pass, dig pass, it become, uh, it become easy. So now bijection from dig pass to Lukashevitz pass. So this will show that the number of Lukashevitz pass of length n is exactly the number of dig pass of length 2n. So here is a dig pass. And you do this, you select each step going down, select uh, one step going down, and then you go the maximum uh, possible uh, number of, ele of elements going uh, north this step. See, you, uh, you take all this, in the same, uh, in the same blue. Uh, if you take this, then there is nobody here. So I take this, take the maximum sequence of northeast edges. You see, take the maximum sequence of northeast edges. Here there is no sequence. Take the maximum sequence of northeast edges. So you pack, you make some packet. You pack to your dig pass by uh, blue, blue uh, packet and. Uh, you replace now these big things by a single step of a Lukashevitz pass. You go from this to this. So you, you get this. See here I jump by level two. Then I go down level one. Here it will be a level. This will be a level going down. I jump in level one. And if I make a compression of the blue, then I get this uh, Lukashevitz pass. The length, the length of the Lukashevitz pass is exactly the number of red edges, which is half of the length of the dig pass. The length of the dig pass was 2n. It's called Catalan number Cn. Now the length of the Lukashevitz becomes n. And I claimed before that the Lukashevitz of length n <laughs> don't exist. Lukashevitz of length n was exactly counted by Catalan number. So these are the main bijection we need. So we have seen from tree to trees, we have seen bijection from pass to pass, and now four new bijection for you, from trees to pass. Yes? Yes? Which one? This one? So you take a dig pass, you select each of the south east step, I have put them in red, and for each southeast step, I take the longest sequence of northeast step, which are just before this, this step. The longest sequence, this, this one. See here, the longest sequence. So you select, you, you put together the red with the longest sequence of northeast. So I get some blue block, blue block of uh, elementary step of my dig pass. The number of blue blocks is exactly the number of red edges. To each red edges going down, I have a blue block. And each blue block is going to be an elementary step of the Lukashevitz pass. This elementary step is exactly the jump you are doing to go from the first element of the blue block to the last element. So here I will jump from I0 to I2. Here I will go from I2 to I1. Then here I will go from I1 to 1. It's a level, one to one, one to zero, zero to one, and uh, I will get this. And conversely, if you have this step, each of these blue step, you add, you add a red edges, a south east step, and then you, you make a sequence of green edges so that you climb until the, the height of the red edges you put here. So bijection from trees to pass. So complete binary tree is going to become a dig pass. Binary tree will become a two-color Motkin pass in a very natural way. And planar trees, I, there is two bijection. One go to dig pass, the second to Lukashevitz pass. And I think this bijection appears uh, many times everywhere, more or less. And uh, so it's good to put uh, in all to visit the garden, uh, uh, 
there's a lot of flower, everything, and with, once you are familiar with the garden, you can do many beautiful things as soon as you put some weight on the tree, on the path, and you get beautiful identities. So bijection complete binary tree to dig path. So in chapter one, we have seen that we have seen that the binary tree and dig path were satisfying the same algebraic equation, even without knowing there was a bijection. Uh, we have seen the, they satisfy the same algebraic equation because we have done the, we have done a decomposition of the complete binary tree into this and this, which gives the algebra, which gives the first algebraic equation. Then there was a decomposition of dig path, which gives you the same algebraic equation. So if you want to, if you don't know anything and want to have a bijection, you can force the bijection by defining in the following way. Suppose you know how to associate to this complete binary tree a dig path. You know how to associate to this to a dig path. Suppose you already define f for small path, then you can define f for bigger path by saying the f of this is, uh, is this, you see. So if you apply recursively this idea, this gives you a bijection. So I claim that this bijection is the same as the following bijection, which is going to be shown with a violinist, with bijection without word, and you should uh, understand the bijection. Uh, it's not what the sound is. Um. Battery, 90%. Connected to Mac for That's all. It was working, and now it's a... Uh, Mac for care to Xavier. Disconnected. Ready to pair. <laughs> <laughs> That's I am lost. Bon, on y va, tant pis. Hein, c'est. So you see, you understand the bijection now, it's time. Uh, what we have done is we, we follow the binary tree in prefix order. Each time you reach an internal vertex, you go up. Each time you meet an external vertex, you go down. And at the end, last one, you do nothing. Or maybe you add an extra minus one at the end. So reciprocal bijection between uh, dig pass and complete binary trees. So, so here is a dig pass. It's the same as the uh, yeah, I guess. What is the, no, come on? you said that uh, we had a recursive definition of the hmm? bijection. So I say that the recursive definition you can get of the bijection, if you apply the recursion, you get exactly the same bijection. Because, uh, so this define you automatically the prefix order. Prefix order is Prefix the order is defined if you apply, if I check, uh, it's a uh, homework uh, to see that if I apply this recursive definition like this, then what I am going to get is exactly the, the prefix order of the binary tree and the bijection between uh, using the prefix order between uh, dig pass and. From the other end, you get <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's. Uh,
point position when I am going down then I I put uh, and I take this kind again up up each time you go the leftmost position and each time you go up you put this kind of a uh, of the of design when you go down okay everybody in the front so I can uh, go fast uh, that's a reverse bijection. So this is rewritten in the, because in the video, the, sometimes some people design the tree going up, sometimes going down. So in this class, we speak both language, up, down. <laughs> Don't be fixed to a certain. Uh, Sometimes we're also going left or going right. Usually it's always up or down. And uh, in computer science, it's always going down. And uh, the trees in nature are going up. Now bijection, binary tree, two column what can pass. So take a binary tree, traverse the binary tree in in a pre-order. You do the same as for a complete binary tree. But except getting a dig pass, you are going to get a two-color Botkin pass. Each time you follow the tree in pre-order, pre each time you have a double vertex, you go up. Each time you have a leaf, you go down. But each time you have a single, simple vertex, going right or going left, then you put a blue level or a red level. And you get a two-color Botkin pass. of length uh, n minus 1, yes, because the last vertex, you see, it's, a, it's an extra which should go, should go down. So you delete the last one, you do nothing. Same as for the bijection with the complete binary tree and dig pass. So when you put this blue or red? When I put blue when I have a single, a simple vertex, having only one sun on the right, and I put red, like this one, if I have a vertex with a, a simple vertex, having only one zone on the left. Uh, there's two kinds of, of a simple vertex, going left or going right. And for these two kinds, I put a level, two kinds of level, blue or red. Now the next bijection is uh, between planar tree and dig pass. So take a planar tree and uh, again you you go you take the pre-order of the binary tree you traverse the, this planar tree you traverse it in the pre-order or the depth first research or you follow if you prefer you follow uh, your wall with a green uh, path and you get this uh, this dig path so you you go in pre-order each time the vertex has a has some uh, sun you go up. Each time you, you go to a leaf, you go down. So one, two, three, four, five, then six, seven. Uh, what I'm doing? No, no. <laughs> no, no, I'm skipping too many steps. <laughs> yes, so, so maybe it's better to, to say with a green path, you see, because you have exactly your green path. If you look it like this, it's exactly the dig pass. Uh, the green pass, you go down, up, up, down, up, down, up. It's exactly the reverse image of the dig pass. So it's not the prefix order because you're visiting each thing maybe more yes. than one. So you, you, what you get is only, you see, when you leave, if there is a sun, I go up, up, up. And then the next one, so you have to go down two steps. Uh, so you have to exercise, put it in precise form, but in visual form, it's, uh, it's very obvious. Uh, but uh, the coding is just the green path that you are uh, 
you are reading like this. And this, uh, if, is it consistent to the bijection between the plane and the... Ah, good question. He, he, did not check, he did not have a, a copy of the slides, but I have the answer to the question. Here is your answer to the question. This is a commutative diagram. <laughs> 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 so you have a binary tree. You extend it to get a complete binary tree. You get a dig path. The dig path gives you a coding of a forest or of a, of a planar tree. Planar tree, you have the coding with the right rotation uh, getting a binary tree and you go back to this. So the diagram is commutative. Huh? The word Catalan garden is well done. Huh? It's a beautiful garden. I will not prove this, but it's uh, a homework. Think about that. What does it mean that the diagram is commutative? You have to put in your mind all the bijection and uh, A beautiful diagram. You could make it non commutative by choosing some other way of uh, making the choosing post order, pre order. Yeah, there is a method. But you can make it natural by. Well, post order, pre order is. Uh, yeah. You will have a racing reverse or. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So finally, the bijection planar tree will catch its path. So here is my planar tree. I put it in a prefix order. It's not the same as before. I put it, uh, you will see why. <laughs> so I take the prefix order of the planar tree and you follow, you do the following. So take the first vertex. First vertex has a three sun. So I am going to put a jump of height, number of sun minus one. I have three suns, so I put x2, or I am jumping uh, at uh, level uh, 2. Now, this one has no sun, so you go down. This one has one sun, so you go at the level 1 minus 1 equals 0, so you have a level. So when you have no, only one sun, you go to a level. When there is no sun, you go down. And when there is several sun, you go, you put, uh, you go at a level, which is number of sun minus 1. I claim that you get a Lukashevich word. Look at Shivit's path, and that this is the coding of the. Uh, so, this is the definition of, uh, of what I say uh, the definition of the look at Shivit's path associated to the planar trees. And now you can ask ah, is this related? <laughs> yes, it's again related, and you have this diagram which is a commutative diagram. But now, you, when you take your binary tree, take the other rotation, left rotation, not the right rotation, and you get this beautiful uh, commutative diagram. So you see, it's a begin, you begin to have a lot of uh, commutatorics behind it, because there is the two rotations involved, the left, the right, here I have a Lukashevich pass, the other one I, uh, I have Dick pass and two Kolomotskin pass. So it's two beautiful uh, commutative diagrams relating all this uh, bijection between tree to tree, pass to pass, and pass to tree. So we have finished the three pass the three trees. I have three more objects in my garden, the staircase polygon, the triangulation of a layer, and the non-crossing partition. So staircase polygon is this kind of things. It's uh, you start from here. There is two paths, this upper path and this lower path. There is two paths. They start at the same uh, vertex. They go always north or east. They finish at, at the same vertex, and they never intersect before, except at the starting point, ending point. So 
So sometimes people call it staircase polygon when you consider the border of the picture in green. And some other people call this uh, polyomino parallelogram. Parallelogram polyomino, when you consider this a polyomino, a union of connected cells. And this, uh, this polyomino, it's a, if I refer to chapter one, it's a directed animal, which is vertically convex and horizontally convex. It convex like this, convex like this, and it's directed animal. So it's the same thing as to say that your polyomino is between two paths, the two green paths, starting at the same point, ending at the same point. They don't intersect except at the extreme point, and they are only elementary step north or elementary step east. So I claim that the number of such staircase polygon of perimeter 2n plus 2 is exactly the Catalan number Cn. I claim this by giving a bijection between staircase polygon and two column Motkin pass. So here is my staircase polygon, and you, you, cut, you cut your polygon like this by 45 degrees diagonal, perpendicular to the main diagonal. So you have some, uh, some strip each time, you see, and there is four, four possibilities for when you cut your polygon. Maybe the width of the polygon is going to increase by one if the two edges are like this. Or maybe you have this configuration, or maybe this one, or maybe this one. Uh, you see here. Uh, so when, when, when the two, two edges are, are the same vertical edges, I put a blue. When the two edges are horizontal, so the width does not increase, I put a red. And sometimes the width here decreases by one, I, I am going down in the Motskin pass. Here the width increases by one, I am going up. So you see the correspondence. Here I am going up in the Tukla Motskin pass. Here I am going down. And here I have the blue level and the red level. So the level of the point in the two column Motskin pass is going to be exactly the width of the, of the strip. Here the width decreased by one, the width increased by one, and here the width is fixed. So you see the... So I start, you see. So the width is always one. The width is always one, so I put, I start at level zero. The level of the two column skin pass will be the width of your strip minus one. So here I start at level zero. Here it increased by one, I am at level one. Now the width is fixed, so I continue at the same level. Now I decrease the width by one and go back to level zero. Now I go, ba I go back to level one. Now it's a, a blue step, etc. So I claim that this is the bijection between staircase polygon and two column Motkin pass. So the Motkin pass have length, uh, if the Motkin pass have length uh, n, then you see there is, I have deleted these extra edges, so the perimeter will be 2n, uh, 2n plus 4. So if the Motkin pass, Catalan number is Motkin pass like this of length n minus 1, so I double this mean 2n minus 2 plus 4 it is. So this is the perimeter of the polyomino is 2n plus 2. The length of the Moskin pass is n minus 1, and I get Catalan number Cn. Now if you prefer a staircase polygon, if you delete the two corners, up corner and corner, then you sh you, you make a sliding 45 degrees. It's in bijection, it's a pair of paths. So it's a skew Ferrer diagram, right? it's a difference between two Ferrer. Now the paths can touch. They start at the same point, they end at the same point, and they can touch, but without crossing. So it is the same, uh, same thing. And now the, the height, different height of the vertices of the Motkin pass will be exactly the width 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Uh, this. So this is the bijection, staircase polygon, 
two column of skin pass. Now we have a second bijection. Staircase polygon, dick pass now. So here is a dick pass. What is interesting is to combine the two bijections. You can start from a dick pass, get a staircase polygon, go back to the Motskin pass. So you get a bijection, dick pass to the Motskin pass, which is very interesting, which is totally different from the one I gave before. But going through the staircase polygon gives you a lot of uh, some formula. We will see how to get formula from this two, combining these two bijections. So what you do is first you are looking the, take the dig pass and look the peak. I put a red point for each peak. peak a peak is a north sea step followed by a south sea step. So put the peak and put the in red the height of the peak. 0, 1, 2, 3, the height of each peak. And for each peak, I associate a column. The first peak is 3, this one, height 3. So I associate a column with 3 cells. Second peak, column with 2 cells. The third peak, column with 4 cells. Now another column. Uh, this peak, another column. This is the first step of the, of, the of the bijection. Each peak corresponds to a column. The number of cells of the column is the height of the peak when the height, uh, minimum height is zero, when you start at level zero. Now to get the staircase polygon, I have to glue, I'm going to glue this uh, column together. But to glue them, I have to know how many cell in common from one column to the next one. So I give you in blue the glue. The glue is encoded here. So between two peaks, there is always a valley uh, the going down up. Now I put in blue the height of the valley, but the minimum height uh, it will be one. So the blue number is one plus the level of the blue point. And each blue number correspond to, the, to be between two peaks. So this is the glue. Put the blue number between each column. So I'm going to glue these two columns. They will have two cells in common, two cells in common, three cells, one cell. But now, because I take a staircase polygon, if I take two columns and want to glue them together, uh, there is there is two possibilities. I can glue them like this or glue them like this. But because it's staircase, there is only one possibility. I have to always to go up. If I glue them anyway, I, glue, I would get a vertically convex polyomino. But staircase gives you a unique way to glue them. And I know that you can check that the blue number is, is less or equal to the number of cells of each of the neighbor column. And then uh, I have a unique staircase polygon by gluing them like this. So look carefully and you glue them and you get your staircase polygon. And that's the bijection. So I will finish with, uh, with 22. We have five minutes more. I will finish with uh, the two others, the not crossing uh, partition and the triangulation of a layer. So a node crossing partition is a partition of one to uh, of a set. Of, I will put the set one, two, three, four, five, six, all the integers until n. A partition into block such that if you take, uh, there is no pair interlacing, which means, uh, see if I have a, a pair in one block, Another pair, you cannot have this uh, configuration. So, for example, if I have a one five, this is in one block, then I cannot, uh, I cannot have the two, two and six cannot be in the same block. You cannot have this kind of inter interlacing in the element of two, two, two blocks. So, this is uh, called non-crossing uh, partition. 
Here it's a special, it's very simple. It's a block are only of these two elements, but block can be of many size or number of elements. And then there is a classical bijection between non-crossing partition and dig pass. Take your dig pass. You number the north east step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, from left to right. You just number them from left to right. And then each north east step is going to correspond to south east step. So you you put the three correspond to three. So you put put the number here on the corresponding south east step. This is the one. You are going the one is going to be here. Five give five, four give four. 7 give 7, 6 give 6. So you can associate to each north east step a south east step. And you put the same number in blue and purple. Now if you keep the purple number, you get a partition into a block, which is a non-crossing partition. See, the block are the descending step of the dig path, the longest you put in the same block all numbers which are uh, a sequence of uh, south east step. Maybe I'm not very clear. It's, a, it's the end of the place. <laughs> First, you start with the blue. Associating east, each north east step, you associate a south east step by pair. And you pair each. You go, you go in the strip until you touch a corresponding uh, for each north east step, there is a south east step associated. So you, you translate the number on the north east. You put the same on the south east, but with a different color. So you have seconds. So each the seconds of south east step, you take all the seconds of consecutive south east step, uh, the maximum seconds of consecutive south east. Each of these seconds of south east will give you a block of the partition. Here, one block, two block, three block, four block. So I have four block of the partition, and I claim that this is a non-crossing partition. And I claim that this is a bijection. It's a classical. Uh, it's become now in the garden of classical bijection. So this is one possibility to, sh to see that non-crossing partition are counted by Catalan number. And they were introduced by German Creveras a long time ago. Um, so now there is some part of matrix use a lot of this kind of uh, free probability and also the rational uh, combinatorics, uh, rational Catalan combinatorics use this. Yes? No, it can be, uh, it's each block is uh, the whole sequence of south -east, consecutive south -east step. So if it's a, I, I take the seconds, longest seconds of consecutive south east step. So this will give me one block. So it can be an LN. So in a dig pass, you can have a sequence of five uh, consecutive south east step. This will give you a block of length five. Uh, so a non-crossing, uh, I should. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, you want slide is missing. <laughs> Non-crossing non -crossing means you take any, any block, any two blocks, you take a pair of elements in one block, a pair in another block, and you cannot have this interlacing between the two pairs. But the pair can belong to a block, a big block, with uh, any numbers of, uh, of elements. Mm. Yes, the partition you get. So proposition, lemma, the, you get a partition which is non-crossing. So oh, you have to homework. Eh? You have to. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the end of the three, three twenty-eight. <laughs> Maybe I will I will start again this uh, next time. But uh, first lemma, this is a non-crossing partition. Second lemma, this is a bijection between non-crossing partition and. Uh, Dig pass.
So I think I will uh, stop here and next time it's uh, next. This is the last interpretation, but I will do that uh, next time coming back to Leonard Euler, the triangulation of a convex uh, polygon. Okay, so thank you very much. <laughs>